I start with matte grey? I have tried the black method because obviously there's quite a lot written about it now that if you start with black you can then pull the shadows through and show all of the detail. But I find that if I, particularly if I'm putting flesh colours on or a dirty white shirt on, covering black is more difficult. So I tend to start from the matte grey, work up with the colours and then I'll use some weathering, dry brushing just to show some of the detail at the very end and to actually define some of the creases. It depends, because obviously I don't want to waste paint and have a lot of it drying out. If I'm doing a series of figures and I happen to have done the flesh colour on one, I tend to move along doing the flesh colour on each of them. Um, but it, it really depends with the um, Victorian lady who's going to sit in the charavan. It was easier to do her dark dress because it was so dominant first and she's got very little flesh showing. Whereas with him, he ha he's got the two arms, quite a large face and then a lot of shirt. So that's purely my preference. Um, but I think everybody does it differently as to you know, what they find most comfortable. I mix everything. I don't think, um, I very rarely use anything straight out of the uh, the tin or the pot, so to speak, because it's, it's they're two bold colours and life isn't like that. I prefer acrylics. I've, I've worked with enamels um, and I have used oils for various things. But I just find that acrylics are what I prefer. But I mean, if you go to the other end of the hall, the lady who's painting up there only ever uses enamels. So yeah, I think it's a way we it's, feel it's, comfortable with, isn't it? It is. I mean, if I'm doing a horse, particularly in 7mm, because I want to show the actual texture, I will use oils because you can really brush up the oils and mix the colours and get some texture behind it. Um, but that takes a very long time to dry. It's just everybody to their own, you know, there's lots written about which is the best way, should it be grey at the bottom, should it be black at the bottom, how do you get the, you know, the fine detail, what sort of brushes should you buy, um, but it's what you're comfortable with. People just need to try, I mean... Yes, you need a good magnifying glass if you're going to do the detail, depending on what scale you're in. Yes, you need some very fine brushes. Um, oh, yeah! But it's not expensive to get a few of those bits and try. And figures themselves aren't that expensive. I think a lot of people think, oh, I won't have the patience for that, or I haven't got the detail for that, or I haven't got the eyesight for that. But, you know, I would encourage people to really try. I do tend to buy fairly expensive artist brushes, and I do like using 10Os and 5Os. Um, because they just are that much finer and I think it is worth paying the extra because you do tend to keep them in fairly good condition they don't you know you don't get hairs splitting um, all over the place they usually are of a good quality you have to shop around for sure there are some which are better quality than other in terms of the detail and obviously with 7mm you can see a shirt yeah, see and a tie and you know buttons on the blazers and things like that and you do want that sort of detail um, and some of them do 
are produced extremely well and others are less well defined so I think people need to shop around and then it's time to decide on the range of figures I mean S&D have a very very good range of figures in 7mm Andy Duncan has a very good range of figures in, in 7mm um, but it depends what you're looking for, you know, are you wanting to create a cameo, do you need somebody mm. leaning on a shovel, do you need somebody sitting to go into a, a car or a, a charabang, are you looking for a driver of a horse-drawn vehicle, so it's just worth really shopping around.